Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now the compact SUV crossover market is one of the fastest growing and probably the most lucrative segments within the automotive industry and this is Sayat's offering. This is the 2021 facelifted model of the Sayat Attacker. I'm expecting a lot of this car and for good reason. The previous model won best used SUV of the year. So this better be a good car and say it need it to deliver. The competition is closing in rapidly with the likes of the Peugeot 3008, the Kia Sportage and the Skoda Karok. So over the course of this video, we're gonna have a look at styling, practicality, and most importantly for me and the USP of the previous model was the driving experience. It was supposed to be a real driver's car, something very unusual for a compact crossover SUV. But before we get going with this video, I wanna say a big thank you to Sayat Hendy in Brighton. They might not be available for walk-in services, but they are available for click and collect, telephone consultations. So if you are interested in a new Sayat, give the guys a ring. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Let's look at the 2021 Seat Attacker. The name Attacker actually is the name of a small village just west of Barcelona, where Seat's headquarters are. But we're not here to talk about unusual facts. We're here now to talk about the exterior styling of this car. And we'll start off with the brand new redesigned LED headlights. Inside that same unit, you've got LED running lights. And when you turn the indicator on, the LED running light actually turns into the indicator. It looks really classy. This particular model is the Excellence, spelt with an X for some reason as opposed to an E but you do get some unique styling around the car. At the front, we've got a brand new uh, grille here, and in there we've got like silver accents and a silver piece that runs around the outside. Right at the bottom as well, we've got some silver trim as well, and all models come with parking sensors, so those sensors are around the front of the vehicle. Right at the bottom, and now this has been moved from up here, we've got the radar which is used for the active cruise control we'll discuss that a bit later on in the video and see that in action but overall i think it's a pretty good looking car obviously quite boxy because it's well it's an suv and it's not a coupe but overall i like the look of it so we're going to have a look around the side of the car the excellence comes with 18 inch alloys as standard 19s are optional, they would look better but would affect the ride quality. I have mentioned the boxy look of this car. It's not just this car, it's all SUVs, it's the nature of the beast. And to accentuate that even more, we've got a very strong and angular suede line running from the top of this headlight down to the back into the rear tail lights. Again, being the excellence, the silver accents I mentioned, we've got them aluminium running around the doors, aluminium roof bars as well. And down the bottom here, we've also got some aluminium. While we're down here, I wanna talk about some styling, this particular part here. This is obviously black plastic rather than body colored. And supposedly, I don't quite see it, but I'm not a designer. That's supposed to give the impression of having a higher ride height to give it that SUV feel. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think it looks higher? Not too sure, but still looks pretty smart. We've got darkened rear windows and even a smaller window up here. Let's a bit more light in and a bit more styling. Also over here, we've got body colored uh, wheel arches and some black trim plastic that goes around. Again, part of that SUV feel. The 2021 model has brand new LED rear tail lights with new pulsing indicators. They look awesome. It's the same as you'd find on many of the Audi cars. The badging of the attacker has also been changed. It's in the middle and we've got a brand new handwritten font. It's exactly the same as you'd find on the Seat Leon, the one I reviewed a few weeks ago. So if you haven't watched that and you're interested in the Leon, put a card up above. We've got a parking camera as well under there 
and parking sensors as well across the bottom. It's only the excellence and above that actually comes with that reversing camera. Very, very useful, but certainly not essential. As we've seen around the side and the front, we've got some silver uh, plastics running across the bottom as well. And these, they're not quite fake exhaust. They're sort of in the same position, but the exhaust is further up and round. So from the back, I like it. We're gonna have a look in the boot for a bit of practicality because it's an SUV and you expect to be able to lug around a lot of stuff in here. So we're gonna open the boot and reveal 510 liters of storage in this two wheel drive model. If you happen to go for the four wheel drive, you do sacrifice a bit of boot space and that drops down to 485 liters. Underneath this floor, you've got a punch repair kit. So that's foam and also a pump. You can actually option a spare wheel if that was what you wanted. So having a look in the boot, we've got a number of tethering points. It's a 60-40 split on the car. And if I go in here, we've got this little button and we can push down the ski hatch. So if you have got longer items, you can push them through. In order to drop the seats down as well, we've got some little switches up on the right and the left hand side. But overall, it's not bad. Um, the one downside to this, there is quite a large load lip so if you are lifting something quite heavy you need to lift it up and over you can't just slide it in and the same would be when you want to take something back out again but overall pretty reasonable storage so now we're going to hop in the back of the car and we'll see what passengers have in store for them so what's it like in the back of the attacker well, I'm six foot, so I've just about got enough room between my knees and the back of the driver's seat. If the driver or myself was any taller, you'd have to push it forward ever so slightly. Plenty of leg room underneath, so I'm gonna be very, very comfortable. Headroom being really, really important. Being an SUV, this is one of the massive benefits, is it might be quite slab-sided, but you get loads of room I've got three, four, five inches maybe above my head. Brilliant. In this central portion here, we've got the controls for your air conditioning, also two USB type C ports. So if you have got an iPhone, then you're gonna to have to buy an adapter, but it's not really a massive deal at all. Central armrest, and this is where the ski hatch would be. So you can fold down that as well three cup holders very nice the seats are really comfy and they look good they're made of part alcantara or suede effect and also a faux leather so they're comfortable to sit on and look really nice adjustable headrests and over on the doors we've got the electric windows and enough room to fit let me get my bottle out this one and a half litre bottle and that fits in there perfectly and they've also spent a bit of money on these uh, door cards that we've got here they've got some stitching and it's like a fake leather again it just elevates the quality of the back of the attacker up here as well we've got a couple of lights and you can try that with this little switch up here either on automatic on or off but overall it's very pleasant in the back here but i don't want to be in here i want to be up front so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna hop out, get in the driver's seat, take it on the road, we'll talk about the tech, how to use the tech, quite a complicated uh, infotainment system to control everything, and the driving experience. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that was a USP of this car, was it was supposed to be a good driver's car, but is that actually the case? So let's get going, I'm gonna hop out, and we're gonna hit the road. <laughs> So welcome to the inside of the new Sayer Attacker. We're going to get going now and talk about all aspects of this car, the driving and the technology and how to use it. So let's put my key away in this little cubby hole under here. I've got wireless charging, so we've got a mat down here for my phone, so we'll put that on like that and we'll crack on. So foot on the brake, we'll press the pulsing start button. Car fires into life. This has got the automatic box, so we 
push the button in and pull it back till it says D on there. And that is it. So now we're off. We'll have a quick overview of the cabin and then go into more detail about each section as the video progresses. So to start with, the biggest difference between this and the previous one has to be the brand new uh, control system here. That's a large 12.9 inch, I think it is. And most of the functionality that you can do on the car can be achieved through here. It's a bit of a maze, so it does take some getting used to. So I'll try and cover off the main features of this. It's not gonna be everything, because you'll be there for <laughs> hours and hours. But unlike the sat lane I just reviewed, there are physical buttons dotted around the car. So if you don't quite feel comfortable enough to use all of this, then you have got them. And again, we'll go over that. Depending which model you go for, dictates which instrument cluster you get. So on most of the models as standard, as with the Lux, it comes with part analog and a digital display in the middle if you go for the premium end which i prefer the look of that you get a full digital cockpit as found in the sayat leon that is really nice it's very very customizable very clear but even so this one is pretty nice and you can customize that which we'll go into in more detail of how you do that later on in terms of the actual feel of the cabin it's typically VW and I'd expect nothing less than well-built top quality materials soft touch on the dash got padding to rest your elbows on the door got a nice central armrest here and if you slide that back there's a button underneath you can slide it back and you get two cup holders and also you can open it up and get even more storage reasonable size glove box to put I don't know, Norm normally that contains just your manuals and no one ever uses it. I don't think anyone puts gloves in there now. This car has a wealth of technology on it, not only to make your journey more relaxing, but also to make it safer. So we're gonna start off with the active cruise control. This combines normal cruise control with a radar to keep you a safe distance from the car in front. So let's see this in action. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna enable the system. So you'd press this button over on the left-hand side, looks like a speedo with an arrow on it. Once that's enabled, you need to then set the speed you want to be traveling at. So at the moment, I'm gonna build up my speed. So I'm doing, well, very slowly at the moment, but if we press the set button, that will set the speed I'd like to be traveling at. And if I press the plus button, so on this road I know it's a 60, so I'm going to change this number down here to 60 miles an hour. But you may have noticed I'm only doing like 45 miles an hour. And the reason for that is the active cruise control, the radar part of this is measuring the distance between me and that van in front. And it will not allow me to get too close to it, but it will maintain that distance, so it will speed you up or slow you down. Traffic sign recognition uses a camera mounted at the top of the windscreen to read the signs on the road. It then shows that information on the digital display in front of me. So I can see here, it's a 60 mile an hour road and that's it. So that's really good. And you can combine that with your cruise control in order to stay within the speed limit. There are some normal bits of tech on the car as well, such as automatic headlights and automatic windscreen wipers. This particular Lux version has got a heated front windscreen, and that's great when the days are very cold, because I think it only takes a couple of minutes to defrost the window. The car uses some of its technology in order to keep you safer. We have lane assist. Now, when that is enabled by pressing the button over on the left-hand side here, picture of a car with a circle split into three segments it will ensure that you keep on your side of the road so if you do happen to wander across it will indicate that on the instrument cluster in front of you and also the steering will guide you back onto your side of the road we've also got autonomous braking so if you are heading towards a car at a rapid rate of knots and it doesn't look like you're going to stop because you're not paying attention 
then it will automatically apply the brakes for you. The other feature this has got, which I'm not quite sure how it works, but is a way that it detects if you're if you're awake. Um, yeah, I don't know how it works, but if you're not paying attention, it will start warning you. If you're still not paying attention, it will apply the brake and sort of jolt you forward a bit. And if that doesn't work, it then will slow the car right down and come to a halt. If you want to configure any of the tech we've just talked about, you can do that in a couple of places. Either on the small digital display on the cockpit or over on the large infotainment system. We'll talk about the infotainment system first of all. In order to get to that particular page, you press these four squares on the bottom left hand side and that will take you to like a home page with all of the various widgets that you can do. What you're then looking for is one called driver assist and in this case it's over here and you go into there. This gives you a graphical representation of where the safety features are and you can press on them so we can see there's a radar in the front so that obviously corresponds to the radar you can change over here so the distance so for example I could press that and then it comes up with right the advanced warning so that was what I was talking about changing the distance you can change the drop down on there so we'll go back so there's lots of these things here speed sign recognition you can say right I want to be warned about it warn me if I go over say five miles an hour and all of these different things I'm not going to go into all of them you can have a play around if you own this car the home page of the control system is split into three tiles and you can customize this so we can swipe across and get different tiles here and in some circumstances you can actually change what's shown inside the tile so this one here has got the trip computer information I've got a little arrow and I can press across and you can change what you see there so that's nice so we're going to go back to the main home screen and we've got the map so if we double tap the map you then get that enlarged onto the full screen and then you can start controlling it and setting your navigation so that's a nice little feature to have as well now one thing is hmm, I'm not sure if it's odd um, I'm not a fan of this whatsoever on any car is voice control I just don't get on with it whatsoever normal manufacturers you know like BMW you say hey BMW hey whatever this one has got a bit of Spanish flair and I need to say hola hola what would you like to do navigation Would you like to enter an address, select one of your last destinations, or obtain route information? I'm going to cancel that. There we go. So you have to say, well, I'm not going to say the word because it will set it off again. So that's unusual. The Excellence model has dual zone climate control. And the wonderful thing about this, we have two ways to control the air conditioning. You can either use the digital display up here or and the best bit is we have physical buttons underneath there they look a bit old-fashioned but they are so much easier to use this sort of thing is going to be something you'll probably be changing more often than not when driving and you can reach down and it's a bit of muscle memory you remember that right the middle dial does this and the one over on the right changes my temperature that is so much easier to use than just the digital version let's talk about the driving experience of this car the original was supposed to be a really fun and enjoyable car to drive but is that the case with this new 2021 model we'll find out shortly i want to talk about the engine first of all so up front we have a 1.5 liter tsi four cylinder turbocharged engine putting out 150 ps and 250 newton meters of torque it comes in both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive and in this case we have the two-wheel drive and matted to that we have a 
automatic gearbox. You can also get that in manual, 60 in eight and a half seconds. So it's not a hot hatch or anything, but it is it's enough to have a bit of fun and make sure you don't get in any trouble. We've got four different driving modes and we can change that using this jog wheel just behind the gear selector. But now we're in sport mode, we're going to go over to using the paddles rather than letting the car choose for me. So I can either pull a paddle or I can pull back on the gear selector as I've done here, pull back twice and now we're over in sport mode. So let's see how we get on. It is a big vehicle, I've got to remember that. It's not like a small nimble hatchback, but is it still a pleasant car to drive? Let's push on as much as I can on these back roads and see how we get on. These are very tight and twisty, so we should be able to see how nimble or not, but I'm hoping it is nimble. <laughs> but it's doing a good job. It's a good amount of grip around those corners. These roads are very undulating to say the least, but the car's doing a good job. It might not be as soft as some of its competition, which will give you a better ride, but then the handling's not going to be as good. I prefer this. It's not bad over this it's actually quite comfortable but it does handle well so I'd be very very happy to go for that compromise the attacker range starts at 23 and a half thousand pounds if you want this excellence model with the 1.5 you're looking at 27 and a half thousand pounds and if you've got very deep pockets and want the performance version that's the Cupra then you're looking at nearly £40,000. Completely different kettle of fish though. But overall, this car is really well put together. We've got some nice materials. It's practical, it make a really good family car. From a driver's perspective, it is a very pleasant car to drive. It handles these twisty roads no problem at all. As long as you're pushing on at sort of six tenths, seven tenths, you wouldn't really know it was an SUV. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's giving you some entertainment as well as some useful information about this new Seat Ateca. Please remember, if you are interested in a new Seat, give the guys at Hendy Seat a ring in Brighton. I'll put their contact details down below. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm going to call this video to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up comments are always welcome and remember to click on the subscribe button thanks for watching